Welcome to Will and Sully and our first ever episode on this brand new channel. Now before I dive into exactly why it is that as a professional canine educator and behaviourist that I chose to bring a Labrador into my young family, I thought I'd very quickly introduce myself and introduce this brand new channel and let you guys know what's going to be on this channel and a little bit more about myself if is this if this is the first time I meet him. So my name's Will, like I say, for the last decade I've been working with some of the most extreme behaviours in the entire country and I decided to move my skill set from working one-to-one -one with those extreme behaviours online to try and reach a bigger audience as my passion and my mission is to help people not only choose the right breed for them but then how to become excellent canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions so that those canine companions don't end up in shelters and then unfortunately euthanised. My dream is to have a canine rescue and rehabilitation centre for the dog breeds that nobody else will touch through them being too dangerous or too aggressive, which is why my other main channel, The Canine Show, often focuses on these large, powerful garden breeds, because it is a breed that I am naturally drawn to and a set of breeds that I absolutely love. Now, you guys obviously found it very interesting when I so openly talk about these large, powerful, mastiff breeds, uh, the Dobermans, the German Shepherds, the Rottweilers, and the fact that I used to have a bull mastiff before she passed away, that my next dog that I then brought into my home was a Labrador. And one of the most common questions that I get is, well, Will, if you love all these large, powerful breeds and you promote them so heavily and you help people work with them, why is it that you chose a Labrador? Now, I just started in the, uh, the initial months in the first couple of years of my main channel. I discussed a lot more about my Labrador and my life with my Labrador, but I found that it necessarily wasn't the kind of content people were interested in, which kind of made me follow the niche of turning that channel into a dedicated guard dog channel because going back to my dream of having the rescue and rehabilitation center everything I do online my business from Fenrir dog training where I personally think we create the best online courses to help you guys become fantastic canine leaders and my newer business Fenrir canine products where again I believe we create the highest quality products on the planet all of that is designed to be able to make enough money to set up this rescue and rehabilitation center so breeds like the Labrador started to get less love on that channel like the Labrador. Then if you've been following my journey for a while, towards the end of last year, I got a brand new Connie Corso puppy that I bought into our home with my two young children and my Labrador. And I documented that uh, process and that journey on my channel Will and Mabel. I was showing how a professional would train a puppy from day one and hopefully be able to help you guys be able to follow along and make sure that you're becoming good canine leaders that are raising perfect canine companions. Unfortunately if you didn't know she passed away at just four months old from a hereditary heart issue called PDA. But in those videos you guys started to get to know my family a little bit better and you also started to see Sully a lot more than I was showing over on the canine show and then since since Mabel passed away I've turned that channel into like a dedicated dog training and theory channel and you guys have been missing the vlog content and wanted to know more about Sully, Labradors, the combination of having a Labrador with a garden breed, why it is I chose a Labrador instead of going straight back into a garden breed when I got one and you wanted to see more about my life and the family because you were starting to get a little bit attached to us and we were getting attached to you in the comment sections and all that good stuff so Will and Sully is going to be that channel channel. It's going to all be about Labradors, why I chose Labradors, good things, bad things, how to train them, things to avoid, things to promote, as well as lots of vlogs every single week of me just exploring the world, being with my family and how a Labrador fits into our life and our lifestyle. And you guys can come along for the journey. So if you are new here and that sounds like something you might be interested in, please hit that subscribe button. And whether you're subscribed or just subscribe by hitting that button, next to the subscribe, there's a little bell icon. Uh, make sure you hit that and then that way you'll get notified when we do upload videos on this channel. So let's dive into why it is that I chose a Labrador. And what I always do when I have these either consultations or that I make videos specific to helping people choose the right breed, I break it down into kind of the main categories. And that's exactly what I'll do here. And we'll start with the temperament of the Labrador. Now, it's widely accepted that the Labrador is definitely the most common breed in America. I think they're the most common breed here in the UK. If not, they're right at the top of the list and they're very much at the top of the list for the most common breed around the world. Now, oftentimes with that comes a lot of people 
inherently don't want one just because they are common and that's kind of unfortunate because the Labrador truly is a wonderful breed and they're wonderful because first and foremost about their temperament. Their temperament is one of the most balanced, calm, relaxed and predictable temperaments in the entire planet and it's that mainly the predictability and that calmness and the fact that you can trust a Labrador that makes them not only one of the most common breeds in the planet but also one of the most commonly used working breeds in the planet for a variety of uh, different roles from dogs for the blind through to sniffer dogs in the police and military. That reliability is absolutely fantastic and was one of the main reasons that I chose a Labrador because when my bull mastiff passed away we had just had our first son he was around six months old and we knew we were thinking about having a second one so we knew that the new dog was going to be growing up alongside two very young and very small children and I was very keen and as much as I talk about a lot of the guard dog breeds I love being good with children when we're talking about very small babies that reliability and temperament was something that was absolutely critical and one was one of the main reasons that I chose the Labrador and I do not regret it for one second. That temperament with Sully has absolutely shone throughout his first three years with us. And I, by far, I say this, he is the best dog I have ever not just worked with, not just owned, but ever met. He is absolutely fantastic. Now, there's a few other reasons I'm going to talk about a little bit later on in the video that makes him the best dog that I've ever met. But like I say, I really want to drill down into this temperament because this is one of the most important things that you need to understand about different dog breeds, especially when you're making the decision for which breed meets your requirements and will fit seamlessly with your requirements and your lifestyle because that is one of the most common reasons that dogs end up in shelters. People choose a dog breed based on what their friends recommend because their friend likes that dog or family member or even worse, they choose a dog purely based on what they they think looks the best then they clash in terms of temperament or energy or intelligence that we're going to talk about in a minute they get sick of the dog once they grow out of the puppyhood and then in that six to 18 months dogs get thrown to shelters by this bucket load and they just can't get rehomed or they've got behavior problems and they get put down and for me it's a travesty which is why I make these videos it's why I, I try and repeat myself over and over again about the importance of this but the Labrador the reason that they're one of the breeds that least end up in shelters and the reason that they are also one of the most popular breeds on the planet is because that temperament like I say is so calm and reliable and can be molded and can fit into so many different lifestyles now as much as I say that you shouldn't pick a dog based on the way they look there is kind of one thing based on the looks that you do need to take into consideration and that is the size of a dog now some people especially first time or inexperienced owners might not like the concept of having a larger more powerful dog that should things go wrong can then very quickly uh, devolve into quite nasty or serious situations and a much smaller dog might be able to stop some of those situations from happening in the first place Again, for me personally, of why I chose a Labrador, I work with some of the biggest, most powerful, strongest dogs on the planet. I absolutely love these kind of dogs and it's what I thrive with working with. Again, like I said earlier in the video, I love working with the dogs that nobody else wants to work with. And again, that tends to be your Great Danes and your Mastiffs, uh, your Connie Corsos and your German Shepherds, your Dobermans, your Rottweilers. So for me, size wasn't an issue and I actually like bigger, stronger dogs. I don't like, um, not that I don't like, but smaller dogs just... I like a bigger dog. I like a bigger dog in terms of protection. I like a bigger dog in terms of being able to, at the end of the day, cuddle on the sofa, something that's just a bit, a little bit bigger, less fragile, a little bit rough and ready in terms of especially now my boys are getting into that toddler stage. Again, I don't want a delicate, fragile dog. I wanted a dog that can be a little bit more ready to rock and roll and ready to be accidents happen with toddlers I'm not saying that they ever hurt them but like I say if you've got a chihuahua versus a labrador the accidents with the chihuahua are going to be more common than with the labrador just because they can take accidentally getting bumped into or their tail stepped on a little bit more so and these things happen when you've got a small young family so again they're the kind of things that in terms of size you should consider as well as your home environment and whether your home environment can fit a dog now we live in a country in the middle of a uh, country we live in a cottage in the middle of the countryside proper middle of nowhere surrounded by miles of fields so for us size wasn't really a problem 
problem. We've got tons of space for the dog to be able to go and wander and run and free, uh, run free. We're going to discuss that a little bit more in the next section about kind of exercise requirements. But for us, for me, I like a bigger dog and I think people oftentimes underestimate just how big Labradors are. They're not a small dog just because they're very common um, and they're the dog that a lot of families will have and they're not ever considered in that guardian category. Labradors are big, strong dogs, especially we got ads from hunting lines. So Sully is a very athletic, strong, powerful dog. Um, and I personally like that and it fits my lifestyle. More so, like I say, it's a consideration if you're not able or capable of managing those kind of larger, powerful breeds. But for me, I was, so that wasn't a consideration. I like the larger breeds. Again, matching up the temperament, it made sense. Matching up the size, it made sense. All right, and speaking of energy, we'll move on to kind of energy and exercise requirements because alongside the temperament of the dog, this next one is the next most common reason why dogs get put into shelters and it's people choosing a dog that's energy levels don't reflect their exercise levels or their energy or activity levels as a family or as an individual, which again is um, a travesty because just for a little bit of research, there is a dog breed that can kind of fit in very nicely with everybody's activity level. You don't have to be a marathon runner to be a good dog owner, but if you are more on the lazier side, then you just need to choose a breed that reflects that a little bit better. Now, the Labrador isn't that. The Labrador is a dog that absolutely loves to get out. They are working dogs, they're retrieving dogs, they're hunting dogs. Now, the more show Labradors have that come out of them a little bit, but even those show Labradors, the ones that you see, the more chunky, ploddy ones that you might see quite commonly, especially here in England, I think the Americans might call them English show labs. Um, I'm not 100% on that, obviously I know more here but of the more traditional Labradors here in England are the chunkier ones and the ones like Sully, the athletic working dogs are often like hunting Labradors or American Labradors. Um, it's kind of how a lot of people discuss them. For me, I always talk about it over on my other channels. I love hiking. A couple of summers ago, we did the Free Peaks Challenge where you do the highest mountain in England, Scotland and Wales and drive between those all in 24 hours. And for all of the training, Sully came with me. So he's been up every single mountain in the country. We did the highest one in Wales twice in one day. Sully was up and down that twice in one day with me. He absolutely loves it. So for me, I wanted a dog that can come with me and do the high. I want a dog, I do a lot of mountain biking. Sully is a trained trail dog, so he's trained to follow me when we're doing the mountain biking, even downhill mountain biking. He's trained to jump over the jumps and rail the berms. I'm gonna do some really cool videos of that in the future, of seeing Sully chase me down a mountain on a mountain bike with drones and it's all in here, it's all planned. So again, make sure you subscribe and stick around for some of those videos. But again, if you're, that isn't your lifestyle, Labrador isn't for you. Go and do your research and find a breed that does fit a little bit better. Or if you like to do a bit of exercise, but maybe not to that extent, maybe look at this more English show type Labradors as opposed to one from working and hunting lines that will need a bit more exercise and a bit more mental stimulation. So the temperament suited me, the ability with my children suited me, the size suited me, the exercise and energy requirements suited me and then the thing that really tipped it over the edge for me and is one of the reasons that a lot of people choose Labradors not just for the working roles but in the household is just how easy they are to train and how intelligent they are the Labrador a lot of dog breeds are very intelligent and this is something that people this is why I always talk about intelligence and trainability because they're not the same thing Sheer intelligence doesn't necessarily mean that a dog is easy to train. Very often times, a dog that is very intelligent can be quite difficult to train because with that intelligence comes more problem solving skills and the ability to learn bad habits as much as good habits. Now the Labrador is right up there with one of the most intelligent dogs in the planet, but also potentially one of the easiest dogs on the planet because of kind of two reasons really. Their sheer desire to please their owners and their sheer desire to work with their owners and to make them happy is like no other breed on the planet it's like there's only really maybe the doberman and german shepherd that comes close in the guard dog world but still the labrador takes the crown the labrador and the golden retriever take the crown for me in this field of I will do anything for you to make you happy. And you tag that with the Labrador of I will do anything for food. And with Sully, I will do anything for food and I will do anything if you will throw me a tennis ball. Combine that with the intelligence and you have the easiest dog breed on the planet to train.
they're engaged, they're switched on, they want to work, they want to please you. You bring a bag of treats out and that goes to crank that dial up to 11. And when I get a bag of treats out and let him know that there's a tennis ball in my pocket, that locked on focus dials up to 12. And it's allowed me to take Sully's obedience to a higher level than I've ever achieved with any of my other companion animals. And by no means am I an obedience trainer. I don't do high level obedience work. I don't necessarily do agility work or anything. It's not my bag, I'm a behaviorist. I really focus on rehabilitation of problem dogs as opposed to training dogs from a blank canvas. That's kind of, if people ever wonder what the difference between like a dog trainer and a behaviorist, that kind of summarizes it. A dog trainer is good at taking a blank slate and making it what you want. A behaviorist, which is what I really enjoy doing, is taking problem behaviors and rehabilitating those behaviors to get them back to this level, where then you can incorporate dog training and off they go. So I definitely fit in that category. So for that, you don't often necessarily need very high levels of obedience. I can do it, but it's not what interests me. What interests me is having a, a happy, content dog that is well-mannered and has enough obedience to be under control in all situations. So in my dog training courses and my perfect puppy courses, that's what I discuss. I discuss about having a good heel, so your dog will always walk nicely no matter where you are, a good sit and stay, so that no matter what's happening, whether it's a dangerous situation, or a social situation, you can put your dog in an unbreakable sit and stay and you know that they're safe and under control in that sit and stay, as well as an excellent recall. So if they do get off their lead or they're chasing a squirrel into traffic, you can get them to turn on a dime and come back to you if you need them to. So for me, being able to do that so easily with Sully was fantastic. Obviously, there's been areas where I've taken that above and beyond. We've done a lot of retrieval work, not to the standards that some of the Americans do with their hunting dogs. And the guys here in England, it's unfair to say that there's there's definitely amazing gun dogs here in England but I follow the guys in America on YouTube and online and like people like Stoney Dennis is one of my favorite online dog trainers um, and what he's able to do with his some of his retrieval dogs is incredible Sully could get there again I've just not done that level of work with him but also with the mountain biking again I wanted a dog that could not only come with me but that I could train him as a trail dog to be a safe one because you don't want a dog that will get in front of your bike because if you hit the dog, not only is the dog going to get seriously hurt, but you're going to go for a ride. And if you're doing downhill mountain biking, air ambulances are on the way. And even worse than that, is if the dog does it to somebody else. So I needed a dog that would be under control so he knows to he can go into heel position if we're going up the hill dead slow and he can drop in behind me at a safe distance and he can fluctuate his distances depending on speed. Things like that have really helped me be able to have the dog that fits in with my lifestyle perfectly because of that intelligence and trainability and is one of the reasons that the Labrador is absolutely perfect. So you combine that temperament, you combine the size, you combine their brilliance with children you combine the um, intelligence and trainability, you combine that their exercise and energy was perfect. And as much as my heart was going towards some of the garden breeds that, like I say, I'm innately in love with, and that, um, like I say, from a heart point of view, I wanted maybe to be looking more at the Dobermans and the Rottweilers or a Malinois or another Mastiff. My head was saying the Labrador is the perfect fit for you, Will. So I went with my head, I went with my smarts and I don't regret it. I absolutely love Sully. He's my best mate and he's been a fantastic dog. They, um, I can't fault him. That's why I chose him. I thought that would be a good video to start this new channel on and then we can move forward here with not only how I trained him, how I achieved the things that I'm able to achieve with Sully, any tips that you guys might have about about Labradors, answering your questions about anything to do with me, myself, the family, my relationship with the Labrador, any of that, you can leave those down in the comment section below. But then also the vlogs of me showing you guys going mountain biking, going hiking up some of the biggest mountains in the country. I'm gonna take Sully paddle boarding and surfing when the weather gets a little bit better. The days out that we take him on with our family and how we can go on lovely family days out and Sully not only be under control, but be a joy to bring with us on those family days out and be a part of our family. That's what I want this channel to be. It's going to be much bit more free flow, a bit more fun, and hopefully a bit more relational with you guys because that's what I absolutely love. So again, leave your comments in the comment section below. Absolutely love checking all those out. If you've got any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, that's for those down there. If you haven't hit that subscribe button by now and you are still here, again, smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss the next episode here on Will and Sully.